hello my friends and welcome back to my channel you probably remember that in my last video i unboxed a wonderful present from one of my followers a wonderful uh, woman who was so generous to send me this uh, box uh, full of art supplies so i unboxed uh, all these supplies in my last video but today i'm swatching the palette that she prepared for me with the mainly saa watercolor you know that saa now i know it's this association for all artists this is what it stands for s a society for all artists a uk based uh, society with a lot of advantages for members and they have their own uh, watercolor brands uh, which has an incredibly good uh, price point and uh, she put together this uh, lovely palette for me and today we are swatching it let's start right now you remember how touched i was by this present so i haven't swatched it so far i have waited to do it together with you i don't know if you have tried this brand you will let me know in the comment if you knew this uh, society as a yay and if you have tried uh, their own brand okay let's start now She has prepared this wonderful swatch card for me. So I will use it uh, and put it away inside the um, tin palette. But uh, for uh, comparison and filing, I will use uh, my usual notebook where I keep all my swatches. So let's start. So I will use uh, the squares are quite small, so I will use this uh, synthetic brush by Borciane Bonazzi that um, is ideal when you need more control with the water and paint. First color is a color that I use very much. Not this particular that I have never tried, but Cambodge Hue. Cambodge Hue doesn't have any pigment indication because um, she said that uh, it's out of market, it has been discontinued and the tube was not uh, legible. So this is the Cambodge Hue, a very warm uh, yellow. It's almost earthy this one. So seems to be i don't know maybe pbr 24 maple yellow i don't know but it's very nice it's very nice maybe i will spray my paint because uh, it's not so easy to rewet so i will spray my paint the second color is lemon yellow and it is uh, PY74 and PY3 Hansa yellow. So PY73, it's not so light, it's medium Hansa yellow and PY3 is very common. Light yellow, it's light Hansa yellow. And this is color, very transparent, very clean. I wouldn't say it's super pigmented, first impression, but the colors are beautiful. Let's go now to cadmium yellow. But there is no cadmium, actually it's a hue because it's um, PY 83 Indian yellow and PY 74 which is Hansa yellow it's a beautiful warm orangish yellow but it's not cadmium so it's a hue actually it's cadmium free version 
very beautiful and then I have a color that is uh, from Dahlia Rowney so it's the only one that is not SAA in this collection I would say and it's a cadmium yellow deep actually it's less deep than uh, it's a uh, fellow from SAA it's more opaque which is typical of cadmium and it is a uh, real cadmium pigment in this case PY35 and PO20 cadmium orange it's very opaque as cadmium color should be very vibrant very pigmented it's the first time I try artist grade aleroni because you don't find it here in Italy only upper find the student grade now alizarin crimson PR 170 it's a naphtal red you know naphtal families are very variable in light fastness so in doubt and if you need a permanent color just stay away naphtal reds are used a lot in toys But um, light fastness uh, can vary depending on the manufacturer and the quantity of pigment, so that's a bit debatable. The color is beautiful though. Here we have light red, which looks like an Indian red. And it has PR101, one of my favorite pigments. Quite beautiful, this one is very pigmented. It's a nursery red. It's a red iron oxide and PR184. PR184, it's a pigment I've never seen before and not sure. I have no information actually. Never seen before, first time. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful color. It's like a Venetian red more than an Indian red, it is warm. Then we have poppy red. It's like a vermilion. It's beautiful. Actually, it's almost an orange. It's a red orange. And it is PR4. One more pigment that... Um, I have not. Uh... So someone rang the door, uh, the bell, the doorbell, uh, while I was watching. So here is the swatch finished. And it's very beautiful. Colors are very vibrant. But uh, once again, here, these two pigments are not much used by professional brands, because especially the PO13, I already said this in my review of the mango. It's a beautiful, very beautiful pigment, but not so light fast. So for practice sketchbooks, uh, if you're a student and you want to practice and experiment, it's perfect. But if you want to sell uh, your art, maybe you shouldn't use this uh, pigment PO13. Here we have permanent rose, PO5. There are pigments that I haven't seen very often and PR 112 once again PO5 has some light fastness issues and PR 112 is a naphtal color so it has the same issues of other naphtal colors but uh, having said this same same concept of this poppy red light fastness can be debatable but the color is vibrant and beautiful now vermilion this is a hue and it is a pr 112 this naphtal this naphtal red that might have light fastness issues it's not very different from permanent rose, but it's warmer, whereas permanent rose is cooler, but they're quite close. 
and that's all for reds this is lime green it's a very yellowish green hansa yellow and phthalo green pg36 is the warm version of phthalo green phthalo green red shade whereas pg7 is the cool shade it's not so pigmented this is the darkest i can get it's uh, quite an artificial hue but for uh, landscapes meadows grass it's a nice green now green gold green gold uh, it's usually py 129 if i'm not wrong it's also yellow but this is uh, a hue and it is uh, py 83 indian yellow phthalo green pg7 and uh, touch of black pbk7 to mute it down and it's a lovely green olive green another muted green with py 83 it's the same maybe mistake maybe that's correct it's exactly the same formula of uh, green gold but with a different ratio exactly the same pigments olive green nice muted green this muted greens reminds me a lot of mango now you have to know that um, i could find out on tubes because i also have some tubes uh, that it doesn't say where they are made and same on the side, doesn't say where they are made. But I, I don't think they're made in uh, you in the UK because, for instance, Alison Seaboard. Uh, this there are three colors from a special collection. Alison Seaboard is a special collection by SAA, and it says made in uh, Britain, but it doesn't say made in Britain for the SAA colors and I think they're made by in Far East either I don't know maybe China or Korea like because they remind me a lot of mango very vibrant not so light fast uh, muted greens I don't know in my mind they compare very well to that type of watercolor and now we have phthalo green pg7 which is, as I told you, the cool, uh, the green shade, the blue shade of tallow green. That's a perfect mixing green. Or you can also use it uh, on its own. It's an emerald green for tropical sea. If you mix it with, I don't know, turquoise of tallow blue, they go well together for tropical sea. Then we have turquoise. Of course, it's not a cobalt turquoise, but it's very beautiful. Oh, wow. This is beautiful. And it is a phthalo blue and phthalo green, as I was suggesting here. And uh, it's very, very beautiful, very transparent. The When you see PB15 semicolon 3, it is the green shade. And this is the green shade. And... Uh, Phthalo green and makes a beautiful turquoise, non granulating, of course. None of these colors is granulating so far. Very vibrant, but uh, non granulating. And then I have uh, tropical phthalo blue, which is the phthalo blue green shade. The one that mix with this phthalo green makes this turquoise. Beautiful. Tropical, exactly. And then we have this very interesting Alison Seaboard Cobalt Blue. Now this is um, this pigment, PB72, is Cobalt Blue Deep. And um, 
I have never swatched it before. I had swatched uh, PB74, PB73, but never PB72. And this collection, Alison, Alison Seaboard, it is mini collection of super granulating colors. And this is so granulating actually. It's a beautiful, almost muted cobalt blue. Oh, this is so nice. Really beautiful. Extraordinary. Then French ultramarine. Now you have to know that uh, French ultramarine is my favorite version of ultramarine because it's uh, the most granulating version and this is very granulating. Now this paper, as you know, is not the best paper to favor granulation, but uh, I don't use cotton that much even in my real life. I use more sketchbooks, so this um, would be a right situation for me. That's why I like to swatch in this notebook and look at how pretty this is. This is wonderful. And then we have uh, one more Alison C. Oh wow. Alison C board uh, color, which is a color that I'm starting to fall in love with and it is Ultramarine Violet PV15, the genuine pigment, a very granulating pinkish violet. I love this. Soon a video, I will make soon a video with my Ultramarine Violet. Look how beautiful it is. Softly granulated, it has a soft granulation, so delicate. Oh, it's beautiful. I love this color. Thank you, follower. This is Intense Violet, also very vibrant, and it is Dioxazin Violet PV23. In my experience, there is not a um, wide difference among brands. So it's very consistent and it's always nice. It used to be my go-to purple, but now I'm experimenting a lot with my purples, so I have new favorites, but that would be the object of a new video. But look at this, very nice, great mixing violet. Burnt Sienna, one of my favorite colors, the ones that I buy and rebuy and buy again in my life because I use it so much, both on its own and for mixing. And this is um, unusual formula. It's uh, PBR25, uh, which is benzimides, uh, benzimides, oh, I can't say that. It's benzimidazolone brown and Hansa yellow. But the result is lovely burnt sienna. Non-granulating, of course. Then we have a warm sepia. Very nice. This is very nice. It's not incredibly pigmented, but it's vibrant. And uh, colors are beautiful, clean, transparent. Very nice, this one. And it's also slightly granulating because of uh, PBR7. Then we have a color that I've never seen before, translucent gray. It has two different blacks, PBK9 Ivory Black, which is a more reddish black, and PBK7, which is a cooler black. And then we have Tano Blue and uh, PR177, which is uh, Anthraquinone Red, a substitute for Alison and Crimson. And here it is. Oh, it's very dark. It's pitch black. Let me water it down. It's beautiful. It's like a neutral tint, maybe. 
No, it's it's more violet. Uh, it's not the paint's grey because it's warmer. Beautiful. It's a great grey, this one. Great grey. And then we have neutral tint, green shade. It's very green, actually. Wouldn't call it uh, neutral tint. Not available. It's like a very green it's a darker green Christmas green beautiful and then uh, my favorite black she's uh, Mars black black iron oxide a granulating black let's see if it granulates this time because it never granulates PBK 11 on this paper and it is also from the collection Alice on Seaboard Granulating Paint. Oh, this is granulating by SAA. There is this collection. I'm trying to move it. It gives its best when mixed with other colors, PBK 11. So this is the collection. We let this dry. Maybe we try a sketch and I come back.
my colors are dry and uh, yes absolutely i can confirm my first impressions that uh, these colors are very vibrant they are perfect for sketching especially if you are looking for paint that have a good value for money and that you can use in a sketchbook because colors are beautiful very vibrant but uh, some pigments are a bit uh, questionable about light fastness which uh, should not be the case in an artist grade but uh, i think i will use this palette a lot because i like to work in a sketchbook that like the sketch that uh, i just uh, Mm, made in a in my sketchbook i that's my way of uh, using paint in a sketchbook mostly i also do some commissions in that case i make sure to use only artist grade of course i'm really in love with uh, these three colors the granulating colors the cobalt blue this deep cobalt blue it's a pigment that i have never found in my life pb72 it's very beautiful it's almost muted look at how beautiful it is even on this paper that doesn't favor granulation at all look at this once dry so granulating same with the french ultramarine and even the um, mouse black you can distinctively see granulation the neutral tint green shade once uh, once dry i think it's maybe a looks like a pbk 31 um, Perilene green, but I don't think it is. But it's very beautiful. Imagine using this for a distant forest. Really beautiful. Or for a greenish cool shade. Beautiful. For shadow. I think that uh, I can put this palette uh, to a good use. So I thank my follower that gave this to me. I was so curious about this brand. And now I have uh, plenty of materials to satisfy my curiosity, which killed the cat, but not me, actually, because um, it's the main uh, fuel behind my YouTube channel. Once again, if you know this brand, if you have tried, I'd love to know your opinion. And uh, once again, thanks, thanks, thanks from the bottom of my heart to my followers that um, filled this palette with so much care. Look at how well filled are the pans um, I think that um, that was made with a lot of care so and some colors are really unique and uh, I love them I especially like this gamboge hue I must say that I have used for the banana let's go to the sketch this was done in really five minutes this sketch didn't take a lot of time I will adjust uh, some details with my pen. It's not even completely dry, I'm afraid. So look at how nice this um, what they call uh, gamboge hue. But I don't think it's gamboge, it's more a, for me it's more a deep uh, Naples yellow. I like to make the, some of the dots uh, here, typical of bananas, uh, to give a, this is, must be darker, because it's a separation between bananas. I love sepia ink dots, dots here, maybe here some dots, they weren't, It's very dark. 
Just my ink. Okay, what do you think of this sketch? Of course, this was done really um, very fast. Uh, I think I should uh, maybe darken here. Maybe I will do it now because uh, I didn't want to wait too long. Uh, because uh, I was afraid that the light might change. You know that I like to film in daylight. So here, same here. Slightly dark, I like to accentuate shadows to be bold. Okay. I don't mind uh, hard lines sometimes. Okay. So I think that uh, it's quite pleasant, this sketch. Maybe I give you the idea what I mean uh, when I say that uh, these colors are perfect for a sketchbook. Maybe I can add some splatter. Splatter always are nice on this type of sketch. So um, I think that uh, I make myself understood when I say that this type of paint uh, might be more student grade, but it's perfect for this type of um, work, uh, quick sketches in a sketchbook because it's vibrant. Uh, you are not afraid to waste your paint, your precious, expensive paint. Uh, this is a cellulose sketchbook, so it's what I use for my daily sketches. I have a lot of fun with this type of material. I can't define this an artist grade, but uh, it's very good student grade beyond any doubt. And uh, I really loved it. I'm not sure who's the manufacturer. I've heard it might be Dalio Rowney, but having seen the pigments I have compared with their student grade, I don't think they use the same pigments. They have a different range. I think it's more made in Asia. And um, it's more like art philosophy, or a mango type of pigments. So I don't know for sure, but that's my impression. Someone knows, please let me know in the comments. That's all for now. One big thank you once again to my adorable follower. And uh, I'll see you soon on this channel. Thanks a lot for having watched this video with me. And uh, I'll see you in my next video. You, if you want to subscribe, uh, you won't miss my next videos. And if you have appreciated this video, of course, you can always give me a thumb up. Ciao, ciao from uh, Elisabetta in Italy. Ciao.